let's get started. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to A Mind Unboxed Part 3. Um, this is our live virtual series showcasing the Unmind platform that we've been running over the past couple of months. Uh, this is our third and final session. And today we're going to be focusing on the individual offering of Unmind. So Unmind Elevate, Unmind Talk and Unmind Help. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thought a good place to start would be to kick off with some introductions. So my name is Laura Cheeswright. I am the Executive Solutions Lead here at Unmind. Um, I have a master's in global mental health, and prior to joining Unmind, I worked as a researcher at the Centre for Addiction um, and Mental Health in Toronto. So I've had the opportunity to look really closely at the relationship between our environment, our cultural conditions, uh, and the significant role they play in fostering positive mental health and well-being. At Unmind, I work closely with our clients and our prospective clients to collaborate in understanding how they can effectively support their employees' well-being, um, acknowledging that really pivotal intersection between well-being and performance, um, and the importance of creating a workplace culture that is promotional of positive mental health. I also get the opportunity to collaborate really closely with our fantastic science and psychology team who we'll be referencing throughout today's session, uh, looking at the impact of Unmind on an organizational and an individual level and ensuring that credibility is always at the heart of, of everything that we do. So really looking forward to today's session. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Marco now to introduce himself. Hello, everybody, and thank you, Laura. Uh, my name is Marco Capazzoli. I'm one of the enterprise um, account executives here at Unmind, actually employee number two when we opened up our North America office back in 2020. Um, spent the last 10 years in the benefits world, helping organizations strategize and develop long-term strategies around how do we put resources in place that relate to everybody and resonate with everybody so that we can appeal to all of the different generations in the workplace. And really what brought me to Unmind was their unique approach, right, in helping organizations support their employees more upstream before they need that level of support through an EAP or more reactive resources. And it's been an incredible journey seeing us develop from a point solution to now this cultural change platform where we really work with organizations to understand what are the main contributors to mental health within their organization and what can the organization be doing in the background what levers can they be pulling to create that psychologically safe and mentally healthy workplace um, so i'll be joining laura today and, and walking through our proposition as well as bringing that journey to life for you through a uh, through a true user experience so excited to be with you today Amazing. Thank you, Marco. Um, so to look at our agenda for today's session, in part one of the Unmind Unbox series, we looked at Unmind Insights and the importance of taking a data-driven approach to well-being in order to maximize impact and ROI. In part two, we addressed the role of leadership and managers in creating healthy, high-performing organizations through Unmind Exec and Unmind Managers. And today in part three, we're gonna be digging into the individual offering with the Unmind platform. So looking at Unmind Elevate, Unmind Talk and Unmind Help. We're gonna start by setting the scene and discussing our Unmind blueprint and the importance of catering to employees' needs with a full spectrum of support from proactive to reactive care. And then we'll bring those products to life in a demo and conclude with some time for a Q and A. Just a bit of housekeeping before we kick off. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box rather than in the chat. Just makes it easier for Marco and I to find them towards the end of the session so we can get to, to all of your questions. If you weren't able to join us for part one or part two as well, we'll be sharing recordings of those so that you can check out Unmind Insights, um, Unmind Managers and Unmind Exec as, as well. So let's get underway with our blueprint. Um, over the past few years, we've seen an incredible amount of investment in the mental health and well-being space. Yet, despite this growing investment of, of both time and money, we're not seeing the impact that we necessarily want to. So employees are still really struggling. Deloitte's latest Wellbeing at Work survey found that 50% of employees are reporting that they feel stressed or overwhelmed always or often. Um, we're witnessing a growing disconnect between the needs of employees and the sentiment across our leadership teams. So the same Deloitte survey reported that 84% of C-suite say their companies have made well-being commitments, but only 39% of employees agree. So we're seeing a huge disconnect from leadership in terms of their awareness of what employees really, really need for support. 
And these struggling employees and that inability to create um, a sense of organizational support is really compromising success. Gallup is just one of, of many that report on the financial impact uh, and implications of poor mental health in businesses. And they find that mental health related absence is costing US businesses almost $50 billion a year. And that's not including presenteeism or, or mental health related churn. So really a fraction of the challenge that we're looking at. Despite this disconnect, um, what we have also seen is an ever-growing body of research and evidence demonstrating the really profound impact we can have if we're able to get this right um, on both our people and on our businesses. So organizations who infect, effectively embed uh, well-being into their culture and have leadership engaged in their strategy are 220% more likely to reach their financial targets. The ROI of organization-wide preventative mental health initiatives is 5.3 to 1, and businesses are 21% more profitable when they're highly engaged, and we know that positive well-being and support is a key tenant of employee engagement. So when we think about closing this gap between investment and impact, how do we create this kind of change? There has been lots of guidelines and frameworks and suggestions and discussions of best practice over the past few years emerging in the world of workplace well-being. Um, and our fantastic science and psychology team wanted to cut through all of that noise and create a clear, singular, credible framework for how to create healthy organizations and effectively support your employees' mental health. So they reviewed over 20 um, leading frameworks, 500 factors that influence our well-being at work, and over 500 evidence-based interventions that accompany those factors. And the output of that process was the Unmind Blueprint, which has five key layers. So we have the I, the we, the all, the rules, and the world. So to break down those layers in a bit more detail for you, when we look at the individual layer, this is focused on those interventions that really empower employees to improve their personal mental health and well-being. And it includes all of those individual factors that impact our mental health. So things like our demographics, our life circumstance, the second layer that we're looking at is interpersonal. So this is guidance on best interventions to enhance relationships so that we can better support performance and improve well-being. The third layer of the Unmind Blueprint is organizational. So this is about effectively addressing those environmental factors and thinking about what are the workplace determinants of well-being. So things like psychological safety, senior leadership support, uh, and effectively leveraging organization-wide data to build an effective strategy. The next layer is legislation and standards. So these are those guidelines that we walked through, uh, that we showed on the previous slide. So things like the World Health Organization um, guidelines, ISO 45003 for psychological safety, the US Surgeon General's framework, all of those leading guidelines and frameworks have been embedded into the individual, interpersonal and organizational layer. And then last but not least, we have the wider system. So what's happening in the world around us and how do we support our teams and colleagues effectively in that context? So when we think about the connection between these three tiers and the products that we've explored throughout the Unmind Unbox series, um, Unmind Elevate, Unmind Talk and Unmind Help service that individual layer. And that's what we'll be digging into in a bit more detail today. Um, Unmind Managers services the interpersonal. And when we look at that organizational layer, Unmind Executive and Unmind Insights fits in there. I'm going to hand back to Marco now to talk more about the individual and the need for a full spectrum of care. Thanks so much, Laura. And we'll start with this slide. Um, might be a little difficult to follow, but if we look at the top, this is a spectrum that we're all talking about. We all live on the spectrum every single day, right? Where on one side, we're flourishing, we're doing well. And then on the other side, we're languishing and, and trying to hang on, right? And for simple math, if we just think of our employees, 100 employees, right? And we look at these areas, on the left side, we have 75% of them. So 75 of those individuals require support that promotes mental well-being, right? They're in a good spot or they're in a decent spot where they're not thinking about any issues that they have. Life seems pretty streamlined and good. That's where majority of the employees are going to sit. When we look at the 24%, some of those 24 of those individuals are going to require support for moderate mental health needs, whether that's a life event or a challenge that they're trying to overcome where they're need they're going to need to talk to somebody. They're going to need some level of support. 
And then there's that 1% that's going to need that intense mental health support, that clinical intervention. Um, so when we look at kind of the organization, a question that I pose to you all to think internally, right, is the resources that you have in place where do you think it's supporting the individuals, right? Is it at the the 75% of them, right? Where we're just talking about changing the way we approach and think about mental health to not be ill mental health, but more so the, the positive side, right? The happiness, the calmness, the coping, the fulfillment, right? That's where we want to spend a lot of the time, but we also need those critical resources in place for those individuals that need that acute care. When we look at or when we think about how organizations have been addressing these challenges over the last couple of years, we're working with three, three options. The first one is an EAP, and though they're absolutely critical for a, for a well-being kind of ecosystem and the support you need in place, it can't be the foundation. It can't be the end-all, be-all to your mental health strategy because it was designed to, to support 20% of your workforce. So one in five of us at any given point is going to be dealing with a mental health challenge, right? We want to be able to support those people. But again, thinking back to those 75, that's lost on those individuals, right? At any given point, they're not going to be utilizing that resource. So we want to make sure it's a critical piece, but it can't be the entire um, ecosystem. Next, we think of the self-serve options. And to be quite frank, this is where Unmind started, right? We started as this app where employees can measure, understand, and nurture their mental health. And best practice shows about 20 to 30% engagement with these type of resources. They're fantastic for the individuals that use them. But where they fall short is creating that cultural change, right? It's not going, utilizing a self-serve point solution isn't going to help an employee feel psychologically safe in the workplace or feel comfortable raising their hand saying that they're struggling, right? They're not going to help a manager spot signs of burnout early on before they can kind of intervene or before things get problematic, right? They're not going to help shift that culture. And really where we see the most impact is when organizations look internally, right? And in creating that psychologically safe culture that enables employees to thrive and utilize the resources that are available to them. And then that final door is the hope door. And it's half joking, but half serious where we just sit there and we hope that everything's going to be okay. We hope that our top performers aren't going to burn out. We hope that our managers can be empathetic and understanding with employees who are dealing with, with situations um, in their own personal lives, right? Now that our personal and, and work lives have all blended into one. But the thing is, is that's not really a sustainable option, right? Or strategy. So when we look at kind of unmine, this slide brings together all of the, the resources that we have. And in part one of the Unbox series, we looked at unmined insights there in the yellow box and the importance of taking that data-driven approach to well-being to maximize the impact and the ROI you're seeing. If you weren't able to join us live, the link to that session will be shared in the chat and shared in the follow-up as well. In part two of the series, we took a look into Unmind Manager and Unmind Exec, where we explored how leadership and line managers play a pivotal role in integrating well-being into the organization, right? Driving that impact and creating that transformational change. Today, we're going to walk through Unmind Elevate, Unmind Talk, and Unmind Help. To me, this is the true user journey, right? What I really hope to bring to life is Unmind's ability to support the full spectrum of care, from proactive to reactive and everything in between, to make sure that employees know anything mental health or well-being related, we could come to Unmind. We don't have to scramble or reach out to our HR business partners to help understand what resources are available, and we're able to get the right care at the right time. So I do want to pass over to Laura quickly, who will share more about kind of the, the high level value of each of the elements of the platform. And then I'll bring that to life with you with a full demonstration. So back to you, Laura. Amazing. Thank you, Marco. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to start with Unmind Elevate, which, as Marco mentioned, this really is where Unmind began. 
Our co-founder and CEO, Dr. Nick Taylor, he's a clinical psychologist by background and worked in the NHS in the UK for many years. Um, and he founded Unmind with the hopes of changing how we think about and support mental health and moving towards a more preventative and proactive approach. So Unmind Elevate is a self-serve platform. It's filled with engaging science-backed content um, that really empowers employees to measure, understand and improve their own well-being. All of the resources within the platform are developed by experts um, in this space with over 700 hours of content. So there's a validated measurement tool within a mind as well called our Wellbeing Tracker, um, which was created in partnership with the University of Cambridge's Psychometric Centre. And that's designed to signpost users to the content that is the most relevant for them and, and really help them build some healthy habits. So 700 hours is a lot of content, but it really guides you to what will be most relevant to your specific goals and objectives. And all of this is, is available in six languages. If we jump into the next slide, so on my talk, this is human to human support. So we do really want to encourage people to be proactively supporting their well-being and leveraging self-service tools. But sometimes we all need an additional care or additional support or just someone to talk things through with. And, and the way in which we interact with this will be different from person to person. So maybe you need multiple sessions a month. Maybe you need a single session every quarter just to check in on something or a specific challenge that you're managing. But a mind talk um, is, an, is access to a global network of fully accredited practitioners um, in over 50 languages. So it's all about accessibility and personalized support. Users can book sessions in a matter of clicks and select a practitioner that suits their specific needs and goals. So it's taking down some of those traditional barriers we see with resources like an EAP to, to make sure that your people have access to the care they need when they need it. Together, what we see with Unmind Talk and Unmind Elevate is a, is a real full spectrum of employee care. So it, it blends the best of digital and human and ensures people have access to that proactive preventative content, but also that additional support should they feel that was what they needed. Finally, with Unmind Help, this is really the next generation of, of EAP support. So our goal at Unmind is always to try and prevent people from getting to crisis. But as Marco showed us with the McKinsey, the McKinsey research, looking at what proportion of our employees will be in those three buckets across that spectrum from flourishing to languishing, sometimes people will reach a moment of crisis. And we want to make sure that if they do, they have access to the resources that they need to help them through that challenge. So Unmind Help is for those crisis moments. It's critical incident support. It's a 24 hour helpline um, and it's financial and legal advice. So I'm going to hand it back to Marco now that we've done a bit of a high level overview of, of those three aspects. And he's going to give us a demo and really bring it to life. Thank you, Laura. And again, as we mentioned beginning, any questions, thoughts that you might have, please pop them into the chat in the Q&A and we'll keep an eye on that. So we're going to start the demo um, via the mobile app and probably get through all of it on here to show you the true user journey. So um, Laura, can I just have a thumbs up? Can you all still see the screen? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. So accessible via mobile app um, on any of the platforms, right? They'll download the, the app. Um, they'll sign in by using their email address or employee ID and off they go. They have full uninhibited access to the entire platform. When they first come on, they'll go through a quick tour that outlines kind of exactly how to use the platform. But every time they log in on the today page, what you'll see at the top is they have their, their focus area where they can select what they wanna be focusing on, what we see work most um, and why we see such high engagement is this isn't just another generic mental health resource that's the same for everybody. We all have mental health all the time and it's different for every one of us. We're dealing with different things on a daily basis. So that personalization really matters. So the ability to, to filter or change the, the experience between overcoming life's challenges or personal growth and development, health and happiness, sleep and stress or stress and anxiety, that filters everything. And what they'll receive when they come onto the platform is recommendations of a small thing to do before work, something they can do during work, and something that they can do after work. And really what we're trying to do here is help them build healthy habits. So if we all think back to a couple hours ago this morning when we woke up, we all brushed our teeth, right? And we'll do the same when we go to bed. That's a healthy habit to prevent us from having to sit in a dentist chair. 
We want to start thinking about our mental health in the same way. What are little things that we can be doing on a daily basis that just helps us keep us in that good space? And the first thing that they're going to be recommended to do when they sign on and after they take that tour is take the Unmind Personal Index. So for those of you that joined session one, understand the Workplace Insights, which is our, our workplace and organizational measurement tour tool. Uh, but what we have here is that personal measurement, which is important because when we're all dealing with something, we might not be able to pinpoint exactly what it is, right? And what we should be working on. It's a difficult topic and it's new to a lot of us. So we need that guidance and handholding. So this is a scientific measurement tool. We created it in collaboration with Cambridge University and we validated it against the clinical assessments for depression, anxiety, and stress. But what you see here in the insights is we took all of that info and we turned it on its head to make sure that we focus on the aspirational elements. So don't measure for and highlight depression, but instead happiness and not anxiety, but calmness and not stress, but coping and sleep, health, connection and fulfillment round out those seven key areas that we can all be better at. Right. So it eliminates the barriers where some individuals might think, well, I'm not depressed. I don't need to use on mine. Right. But we can be happier. We can learn different ways to cope and be more present and fulfilled. So the individuals will be able to answer those and then be able to click into any of these areas and understand why that's so important. But then also be recommended and signposted to specific science backed content that's specific to their individual needs. And that comes in two forms courses, which are learning and development courses. They span the course of a week and they're broken out into 10 minute sessions per day or recommended in the moment shorts, which are that in the moment support. So whether we had a difficult meeting, right? And we need that breathing technique before we go into another meeting or we're laying in bed at 2 a.m. and we can't fall asleep, platform's not gonna say, hey, sit through a week long course on why sleep is so important, but instead it's gonna have sleep sounds and different things to help you put to sleep in the moment. So once they take this assessment, the entire platform, including that today page becomes personalized. We integrate with work. So whether you're using Slack or Teams, individuals will get these type of notifications when they log into the things that they're using on a daily basis. Because so we don't want them to just come to Unmind um, or think they have an issue or need or want to work on themselves and have to come to Unmind. We want to meet them where they are and make it as accessible as possible for individuals around the world. Now, the data tells us that individuals are four times more likely to utilize the platform on a weekly basis once they take that unmined personal assessment. What that tells us is, yes, the platform's great, the content's phenomenal, but the personalization matters. And though we'd like to say that everybody should take that, we know that's not the case. Some individuals might want to click on Explore and take a look through the content libraries on their own and sift through the sea of content that we have to find something that works for them. But we've made it an easy experience. So at the top, there will always be a featured piece of content. And then you can see the library below where it's um, training for managers, right? Specific content that's delivered to managers, which we covered in the, in the previous sections, but things like neurodiversity at work, leadership skills, team culture, um, team performance, ways to manage self-care, right? So individuals can click through any of these and apologies that that was the, the next page. I, when you click into here, these are the other sections where individuals can also search and try to understand, hey, if I'm having trouble sleeping right now, I don't need to um, I don't need to search or, or go far. I can type in here and it'll pull up all of the content in the platform that relates with this. Right. And we can click into any of the other areas, whether it's our body. Right. And dealing with we're not just dealing with the emotional side of things, but it's the physical, the emotional, the social as well um, and have different exercises and stretches and routines. So if we look into grow, right, things like introducing to mental health or ways to boost resilience and boost happiness or ways for me to grow my mind. Um, so all different elements here that the individuals can take a look at. And they'll always be, again, featured content, new releases, as well as these courses that they're already taking part of, right? So they don't have to kind of search through. We want to bring everything everything to the forefront for these individuals. Um, one of the big focuses that we have, and I just want to keep an eye on time to make sure that we're doing well with that, but 
big thing that we're focusing on is real stories here at Unmind. What our focus is, is to make mental health a human topic, right? Something that we talk about freely, just like we talk about physical health and we want to shatter these stigmas. But what we see resonate most with our clients is hearing it from others, hearing it from their colleagues, hearing it from their leaders that, hey, I'm not the only one that's dealing with this. My most senior leader is having an issue and they share that, right? So things like how individuals overcome certain challenges or different coping mechanisms that they have, this is where we see a lot of that impact. And we encourage and recommend our clients to, to come into the Unmind Studios to create this bespoke content so that the individuals feel that this isn't just another check the box exercise. Our organization is truly trying to create this change. So overall here, this is the employee experience where they can log in, they can search through it, they can better understand what's going on individually, and then they'll have access to that science-backed, evidence-based content that's specific to each of the areas where we see the area of opportunity. Um, so that's, again, that's 75. Think of those 75 individuals there. For other individuals, the 24 and the 1% um, who might need that more clinical care, what we launched is Unmind Talk. Um, and it's great. I actually, I said I was going to share it because right before this, uh, this webinar, I had a session with one of my coaches through Unmind Talk. And it was a fantastic experience, as it always is. Um, what we realized was a lot of organizations were struggling with siloed systems, right? So they had some proactive mental health resources. They also had some reactive resources that required them to go into a whole nother um, application to, to get access to care. And that requires calling into hotlines or talking to gatekeepers and getting qualified. What we wanted to do is bring that all into one platform and simplify that experience to get individuals the right care at the right time. So within one click of the button now, we can click in and show where we're located, right? So we can select there and then it'll pull up all of the, the practitioners that are on the platform. But the biggest piece, and it goes back to what I said earlier, is that personalization. We feel comfortable talking to individuals that look like us, have similar life experiences, understand what we're coming from. So we don't want a gatekeeper to tell us who we can talk to. We want that choice for ourselves. So we can refine our search at the top between languages, focus areas, and different approaches, right? So again, I might want to talk to somebody today about my career. Tomorrow or next week, it might be talking about my relationship. It doesn't have to be the same conversation. And what you see is we also call it unmind talk because therapy is a stigmatized word, right? And we don't want people to feel threatened by that. We want people to feel comfortable opening up and talking to it. So as you can see, you can kind of click into different languages that it's available, but also what your specific individual focus area is. And then it'll filter down the practitioners where if I click onto Keith's profile here, it's gonna share kind of an, an intro um, description here. Some of Keith's focus areas, the approaches he specializes in, and a little bit about Keith himself. And right from here, I can click book a session, and it's going to pull up Keith's calendar with the available dates and times. I can click on that, confirm, and I'll ha now have an anonymous calendar block in my calendar, and I'll receive a 24-hour notification and a one-hour notification prior to the session and have a session with a practitioner of my choice. So back to what Laura said earlier is, bringing everything under one platform, allowing employees that brand recognition to know Unmind is our mental health and well-being resource, where if I'm doing well, there's there's content there, science back to help me stay there. And if I'm struggling, I can either have that self-serve content and do that learning and exercises on my own, or there's that human to human support as well. What we realized when we, um, when we launched Unmind Talk, um, was we were talking with a lot of our, our global clients like Nike and Disney and Uber. Um, and what they were saying was the EAP ancillary. So EAPs offer that critical incident support, the legal and the financial support, right? And that wasn't included in on my talk, but we saw that though it's only 1% of EAP utilization typically, 
it's critical that that 1% has access to that type of health. So what we did is we launched Unmind Help, um, which is a pay-as-you-go option. So we don't believe that an organization should have to pay up front for that service. What we do is we make it available to you and it's top quality and you only pay for the, the sessions or the help that is needed. And what our goal is here is to take that investment that organizations are already spending on that reactive care keep it in place, but reallocate some of those funds to focus more proactively because we know that healthier, happier employees are more productive, right? If we can support them more upstream before they need access to that clinical care, that's where that we can make all the difference. Um, so that's kind of the, the quick high level overview of Unmind Elevate, which is that experience, the Unmind Talk, um, which is the human to human and access to a global network of practitioners. And then Unmind Help for those individuals that need that, that critical incident support, maybe some legal and financial and tech support is available all under one platform. So I'll hand it back to Laura now um, for the next piece. Amazing. Thank you so much, Marco. That was fantastic. Funnily enough, I actually had an online talk session earlier today as well. So we're both really practicing what we preach today and making sure that we're accessing that benefit that we have as well at Unmind. So we're going to move into our Q&A now um, and answer some of the questions that people have popped into the Q&A box. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for throwing some questions in there. Just a reminder, if you do have any others, please pop them in the Q&A and, and we'll be able to get to them. Um, I'm going to start with one for you, Marco. So how do we recruit practitioners for talk? Yeah, it's a great question and one that comes up, especially with the global nature of it, right? And I think the, the most important thing to focus on is the quality of the practitioners. So um, each of the practitioners on the Unmind platform goes through a seven-stage verification process where they're not only, uh, we're not only um, making sure that the credentials are in place, the licensure hours, but they're also having an hour long conversation with our head of science to make sure that the level of care is, um, is up to the standards that we want on the Unmind platform and why we're able to um, see such quick turnaround. It's typically around 48 hours where an individual can have access or have that session with a practitioner is because we really focus on the practitioner. So what we hear from clients who work with EAPs or even therapists and practitioners that work with EAPs is that they typically are paid less than market rate and they're paid after the sixth or eighth session. If I'm putting myself in the shoes of a practitioner, I'm not really incentivized uh, to, to take a lot of those type of clients, right? Because I'm getting paid less, I'm getting paid later. What Unmind wanted to do is focus on the practitioner out of the four stakeholders in the, in the, um, in the talk element, right? The practitioner, we pay them market rate and we pay them immediately after every session. So what we're doing is helping drive business for that practitioner and helps kind of make it a seamless transition for them or a seamless um, experience for them to drive new business. And also no practitioners get in the business to, um, for short-term care, right? Four, six, or eight sessions. A lot of the issues that people are dealing with require longer longer treatment um, or longer talk. So what we wanted to do is make sure there weren't limits to that, make sure that it made sense for the practitioner to prioritize it for our clients. So that again, within four clicks and within 48 hours, I can be talking to somebody that I need to for a situation that I'm dealing with. Amazing, thank you. Um, another question that we've got is we've implemented lots of different things over the past few years, but typically we see low engagement. What do we do to drive engagement with the individual offering? So I'm happy to take this one. I think it's a it's a really big question and one that we we get often. So I think there's sort of three key things to mention within that. The first is the content actually within the offering. So the content in a mind elevate and a mind talk is, is obviously very engaging and we maximize how relevant and effective it is to ensure that people are motivated to want to engage with it. So the diversity of content on Elevate, the accessibility of talk, the range of practitioners, that full spectrum of support, all of that is a format that's really conducive to engagement. Um, our content is rooted in lots of different pillars. So there's mindfulness, cognitive behavioral therapy, positive psychology. So if one type of, of intervention isn't necessarily your cup of tea, there's lots of different um, offerings on there to make sure that we're hopefully catering to as many people as possible. 
The second piece to note is our fantastic client success team. So they really are world-class experts in effective launch plans, comms, um, providing that ongoing support to ensure we're doing everything that we can to maximize engagement. So we know that a mind is an effective tool. We've done a number of really exciting studies looking at the efficacy of our mind. So it's about getting it into people's hands. So we really don't believe in the launch and leave it strategy. Your client's success manager is an ongoing strategic partner helping you you implement this and maximize the value for your people. Um, the third piece is, is also what we think about um, when it comes to really the saturation of the message as opposed to adoption and engagement. Obviously, we want to make sure as many people as possible are leveraging the resources that we provide. But the the reality is that you can give people the most incredible resources in the world and not everyone is going to use them, but everybody will be affected by the culture that we build and by their managers capabilities in talking about this topic and how we combat stigma across the organization. So we not only think about engaging people with the online platform, but also with the topic of well-being in general. And that comes back to the full platform, whole organization approach that online takes. So leveraging that leadership team, ensuring we're equipping our managers and our champions with the skills they need to create psychologically safe um, teams across the business, leveraging data to effectively address those organizational determinants of well-being um, and really coming at it from lots of different angles. So we are saturating that message across the business. A really fantastic example of this recently, we ran a number of leadership um, webinars with a leadership team at a big financial services client that we work with. And we saw a 33% increase in uptake on the Unmind Elevate platform post those webinars. So making sure that we're implementing that cascading permission is, is a really key focus as well. Um, I'm going to have a look back in the Q&A box. Yeah, I just saw one came through, Laura, that asked about the type of clinicians that are available on talk. Uh, and I could take that. So um, it's correct. So it's coaches, um, psychologists, licensed clinical social workers, um, all the way up to psychiatry. So we don't do any of the, the prescribing or the medication management, but everything up until then. So that includes, again, coaches, um, licensed clinical social workers, therapists and psychologists as well. Amazing. Thanks, Marco. Um, there's another one in here as well. So what happens if you don't use all your talk credits? Um, I'll cover this briefly. And then if you, there's anything that you would add, Mark, I'll, I'll hand over to you. So I know that the way that our team, so we have a credit bank. So if you partnered with Unmind to launch out Unmind Talk, you would have a bank of credits that your employees would be pulling from. We create this credit bank based on existing engagement rates across our client base. So we, we use your headcount and the regions that you're operating within to make sure that we're being um, really purposeful and intentional with the number of credits that we would provide you. So hopefully it would be an accurate number that we would expect to see utilized across your population. Were you to not leverage all of those those credits, they would roll over to the next year is, is what I understand. I think the purpose really is to just maximize accessibility of talk and, and ensure as many people are using it as, as possible. So we could implement lots of different strategies to drive that engagement. But if you had leftover credits, I believe they would roll through. Is that is that correct, Mark? I keep me yeah. honest. Yep. No, that, that's fantastic. And the only other thing that I'd add is, is thinking about it from the business perspective, right? When we look at EAPs and how those sessions typically work, um, it's again, six, eight or 10 sessions per individual per year. What happens a lot of times is those individuals who have again, overcome whether it's personal ego and understanding that they're struggling with something and need to reach out or overcoming the stigma of asking for help. A lot of them are dealing with situations that can't be solved with four, six or eight sessions. So in that case, what would happen is they'd get declined and referred back to their general practitioner. Fund my talk, what we wanted to do is eliminate that and make sure that if I need 10, se 10 sessions, I have access to that. Well, if Laura has, needs two sessions, she also has access to that with no limit. What we want to do is the goal is it to, to drive everybody to, to take talk sessions, right? And to utilize those resources. But just knowing that they have it and knowing that at any given point within four clicks, 
I can have a therapy session. There's no hoops to jump through. What's important for the business is that you're not paying for those sessions that are unutilized by certain individuals, right? We're not leaving eight sessions on the table at any given point. You're only paying for the sessions that are utilized. And again, early in our relationship, we'll understand Hey, we'll use the, the data to show us, okay, based on your population, based on your employee count, how many sessions we can anticipate. And with that, you can buy those in bulk so that, again, you're getting that bulk pricing discount. But let's say those go out. Well, great. We can, up, so we can, um, we can increase the number of sessions available. But if they're not utilized, those carry over to the next year, right? So we only want you to utilize what, or only want you to pay for what you're utilizing. And again, the main goal is to, to limit those numbers, make it available. But again, if we support these employees more upstream, they're not going to necessarily need that for every single situation. So. Fantastic. Thank you, Marco. Um, we've got another question in the Q&A, which is what is the expected engagement rate with talk? Um, do you want to take that one or do you want me to jump in? Um, you could take that one. Great. Thanks. So I think, again, this really depends on the, the type of business, the size, what levels of stigma exist within the organization. But we typically see around 20 percent. So if we think about the average engagement rate of an EAP being anywhere between two and four percent and also acknowledging that breakdown that we spoke about earlier in the conversation, that the graph that Marco walked us through, we know that on average, 24 percent of our business will be needing this additional support. So. In a traditional EAP where we see two to four percent, that is a massive portion of people who are struggling, who are not getting access to that care. So we see a much more um, a number that's much closer to servicing that population that we know would be struggling. But again, it really depends on the culture and the environment and the levels of stigma that that exists within the organization, which comes back to the importance of that whole organization approach and making sure that we're addressing the cultural um, context as well going to have a look in the Q&A box. Yeah, I see a couple of there's a follow up to the question about the the type of practitioners on the platform. Uh, the question was, can an employee search for practitioner who is a person of color or part of the LGBTQ plus community? And that answer is yes. Um, and there's a bunch of filters that they can filter down um, between, again, languages, but also um, ethnicity, um, LGBTQ plus um, there's a whole others and we can share that in the follow up as well. Again, the biggest piece is making sure that everybody, no matter where they are around the world, feels comfortable talking to somebody that that they choose. So, yes. Fantastic. Um, we've got another one in the in the box. So we currently use another mental health platform and our rep hasn't been the most responsive or helpful and our data is difficult to decipher. What do your reports look like and how often do you communicate with the admins of organizations to help promote your program and translate reports? Um, that's a really fantastic question. I'll, I'll kick off and then if there's anything else you want to add, Mark, I'll pass over to you. So our client success team really are a strategic partner in this and they are they are people who've partnered with organizations many a time to build a successful well-being strategy. So they're very hands-on in terms of helping you launch and ensure the most impactful strategy with our minds. So we provide comms bundles, um, lots of different engagement resources, delivery plans, um, and they would meet with you on an ongoing basis. Particularly, they would have quarterly business reviews where you can really sit down and say, you know, have we achieved what we wanted to achieve in the past few months? And, and what are our goals moving forward? So making sure they're being really strategic in, in the actions that you're implementing. In terms of the data that you get visibility to, so you would have access to an admin dashboard, which you would be able to, to access at any point where all of your data would be coming through live. So you can take a look through that as you go. And then we would be able to decipher that with you in those QBR sessions. The other piece to reference with Unmind Insights, which is our organizational measurement tool, we would launch Unmind Insights, that data would come through in your admin dashboard. But the other thing that we do with that data is we will sit down with you and do a really bespoke specific session where we walk through that data in a lot of detail and provide you with tailored recommendations that have been created by our science and psychology team. So they would sit through and look through all of your data, look for pockets of best practice that we would want to replicate, look for the teams that are really struggling or at risk of burnout that we would want to make sure we were catering to um, and help ensure you've got some recommendations that are the most relevant for your business um, and ensure that you can really translate those reports into action. One other thing that I would add there is 
the the partnership starts before Unmind is even launched. And that's really where I see um, the success of our partnerships really starts where on day zero, you're going to meet with your client success team. And what you're going to do is outline what success looks like for you and your organization, right? What KPIs are you going to be measuring? What's important? What, when we look 12 months down the road, or when we get to that point, when we look back, like, what did we want to accomplish? And not just certain things, right? Generic mental health things. We want our employees to have resources. We want them to be happy. But what are the business challenges that you all are facing, right? And what's the impact that the business is feeling there? And how do we align and drive high performance, both business and individual through a mental health resource? So we have that strategy. Again, getting away from the way of old of throwing things against the wall and hoping they stick to being more strategic in everything that we do from launch materials to consistent communication through the, the good times and the bad, right? A lot of us only talk about mental health during open enrollment or when an employee first onboards to the company and then it kind of goes away. But when priorities shift or challenging times present themselves, that's when their communications, we need to double down on that, right? That's how we make it feel like this isn't just another check the box exercise. Um, so thanks for that. Another question I just saw come up, actually not a, not a question, um, but highlighting our CEO, Dr. Nick Taylor's new podcast, Lead From Within, um, highly recommend, please keep them coming. Um, there's so many that are about to be released and we're excited that it's landing. Thank you so much for uh for, for taking a listen. Really what the goal is here is to have these transparent conversations with leaders of organizations at the highest level, talking about what they're doing, right? Helping other organizations understand different ways to be looking at things and different things they can expect in working with the Unmind team. Um, so thank you so much. Happy that those are resonating for you. Amazing. We've got another question as well. What is the minimum age for a user to use a mind? So I'm pretty positive it's 16, but we'll double check on that one as well and, and come back to you um, in the follow up. Yeah. One just came in. What is the time frame from partnering with Unmind to launch? So typically we're seeing it's typically six to eight, actually four to six months. Um, and that includes, again, that's our sweet spot where we can make things happen. Um, if it needs to be ramped up more quickly, if there's kind of a, a timeline that you're trying to reach or a specific date that you'd like to have it, we can do it. There's some building that goes on. Another thing, a piece that I didn't touch on is the Unmind platform serves as your central well-being hub. So in the internal resources through Unmind, we house all of your other mental health and well-being resources and can signpost individuals to those. So a big piece of building out the platform is making sure it's bespoke to each of our individual organization partners. We also include all of the external resources based on each of our clients' geographic locations um, to make sure that, hey, not only is this help available to you through our organization, but here's some free resources available in the community as well. So again, a lot of that build up and then the talk element is another piece, but um, figure for, for your question now, time frame wise is between four to six weeks. Amazing, thanks Margo. So last one we've got in there, how do you roll out talk as an existing client or prospect? Um, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, I can touch on it. And if I missed anything, please let me know. Um, it, it comes to mind, actually, a client that I work closely with, a uh, global organization who was utilizing Unmind's um, essentials package, which is everything we offer exclusive of talk, um, because they were still under contract with their previous provider, um, has recently come on board. Um, and really what that is, is ensuring that we understand all of the different country locations, making sure that our practitioner network is able to um, support those employees. And again, we're not just getting an individual in another country is going to speak to someone in their country in the same language who understands the cultural nuances. So when we do that, we ramp up the practitioner network, make sure the support is there. We also work with you in understanding um insurance tie-in. So this is another element that comes our pro pack. There's so much to uncover in this, in the short amount of time, but our pro package includes 12 sessions. Our enterprise is an unlimited number of sessions for individuals. Um, what we make sure is that all of the background stuff is, um, 
again, practitioner network is ample and able to suit and that we're able to um, get the reporting that you need, make sure that it integrates with all of your other systems, but it's simply no other contracting paperwork. We're simply um, ramping up on our side, building the platform and then opening, turning that light switch on for individuals. So it's not a heavy lift. Laura, was there something else to add for that? No, I don't think so. I think you you covered it really well there. And I, I think if it is um, a particular question that someone's interested in, please do reach out because the experts on this would be our client success team as well in terms of what happens after that signature sign. So they would be able to really bring that to life for you and we could share some more details um, after the session as well if, if that didn't fully answer the question. But I think you you covered it really well. So that was all of the questions in our Q&A box. So really happy to give you 10 minutes of your day back. Um, the recording of the session will come through tomorrow. Um, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a really great session. Marco and I have really enjoyed joining you all and talking about the online individual offering. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you so much for your questions and your, and your engagement. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Take care, everyone. Bye.